Okay, so the next spatial discrete random variable and the last one is the hypergeometric random variable. Again, by looking at the name, we may think that there may be a relationship between the geometric and the hypergeometric random variable, but it's not like that. So suppose that there is a finite population of size, capital N, that contains K objects with a spatial feature. So imagine you have a ball, and in this ball there are uh, 1,000 little balls, okay? And in among these 1,000 little balls, 400 of them are red balls, and 600 of them are blue balls. So there is a population of 1,000 balls here, and capital N here is 1,000, and K of them, in our case 400 of them, are objects with a spatial feature, which are red balls, for example. So we then randomly draw a sample of lowercase n objects, okay, from this finite population without replacement. So we have a population, parent population of size n, and k of these n objects are spatial, and we randomly select a lowercase n amount of this uh, population. OK, obviously the lowercase n should be less than or equal to capital N because we can at most select all of them. So the number of objects with the spatial feature in the drone set, OK, so this drone set is called the sample, OK? The number of objects with the spatial feature in our sample is a hypergeometric random variable, OK? So actually, we have calculated probabilities uh, about the hypergeometric random variables previously without naming that this is a hypergeometric random variable. OK, so we have used the combination formulations, number of combination formulations to calculate hypergeometric probabilities. So let's just say X is the number of spatial objects obtained from a sample of N objects from a population size n with k spatial objects. Now, let's just repeat it once more. There are n members in the parent population, and k of them has a spatial feature. And we are randomly drawing a sample of size n, lowercase n, which is a small portion of the parent population, and we are interested in the number of spatial objects in this sample. OK, so how do we calculate the uh, probability of the number of spatial objects in the sample X to be any X value? So you see, first we need to consider the number of outcomes in our sample space. So in this experiment, when you draw lowercase n objects from capital N uh, objects in the parent population, there are capital N choose n many ways to do that, okay? This is the number of outcomes in our sample space. And because we are interested in exactly x of these drawn n objects to be spatial, this means from the spatial members of the parent population, we need to choose X of them. And from the remaining non-spatial members, which is capital N minus capital K, we need to select N minus K of, N minus X of them. So this probability calculates the probability mass values for this hypergeometric random variable to be equal to any value. Obviously, there are some conditions here. The probability mass values can be positive is if the X value here is among these values, okay? So the maximum value of X can be either N or capital K, whichever is the maximum. And the minimum value of X here, where the minimum value which, which has a positive probability in hypergeometric probability mass function can either be zero or N plus capital K minus capital N, whichever is the maximum. So uh, we have three parameters in a hypergeometric random variable, as you can see. We have capital N, which is the parent population size. 
which can be any positive integer value. And the number of spatial objects in this parent population is k, it's our second parameter, and it can take any value, any integer value between zero and capital N, okay, any number of the parent uh, members, any number of members in the parent population can be spatial. And the sample size that we draw from a parent population of size capital N can be any value between zero and capital N as integer. And we say that X is a hypergeometric random variable with these three parameters. So the expression is as follows. So let's solve a question about hypergeometric random variable. And when you see this question, you will realize that, I mean, the calculation of hypergeometric probabilities is something we have already seen, we have already known. So there's a deck of cards containing 20 cards, and six of these 20 cards are red cards, and 14 of them are blue cards. So we just say six cards are spatial and 14 cards are non-spatial. We are randomly drawing five cards, okay? Our sample size is five, and we do this without replacement. So in order to define a hypergeometric random variable, these five cards must be selected simultaneously at the same time. So this is uh, the same uh, way of selecting these cards without replacement. So we select them one by one, but we do not put the previously selected cards back in the deck. Okay, so we are basically creating a sample of size five from this parent population of 20 cards. What is the probability that exactly three red cards are drawn? So the number of spatial cards or the red cards selected when you draw a sample of size five is going to be a hypergeometric random variable. And this hypergeometric random variable has the following parameter assignments. The size of the parent population will be 20, and the number of spatial objects in the parent population is going to be six, and the sample size we draw is going to be five. And we are interested in the probability of X being equal to three. This means when you choose five cards among 20, there will be 20 choose five different outcomes in the sample space. But because we are interested in the number of red cards that we select to be equal to three. This means we need to select three out of six red cards and two out of the remaining blue cards. Now, if we calculate the number of combinations given here, then we are going to end up with probability of 0 0.1174. Let's show another example about the hypergeometric random variable. It says a small voting district has 101 female voters and 95 male voters. So there are 196 voters in this district. So we randomly select a sample of 10 voters. What is the probability that exactly seven of the voters will be female? Okay. So here we have a population of 196 members, 101 of them are female, and the sample size we draw is 10. And we are interested in having exactly seven voters to be female. So let's see, why is a hypergeometric random variable where the parent population size is 196, a total of female and male voters, and the number of spatial members, number of the female, is 101 in this parent population, and the sample size is 10. In this sample, we are looking for the probability of the number of spatial objects to be exactly equal to seven. Again, the selection process, the drawing process has 196 choose 10 many possible outcomes. And since we are interested in the number of spatial members in the selected 10 to be equal to seven, this means from 101 female, we need to choose seven, and the, from remaining 95 male, we need to choose 
three members. And the probability here, according to the combination formulations, is going to be 0 0.1304. Now, if you check the denominator, if you intend to calculate this number of combinations by hand, you are going to see that this is going to be a quite large number. So in such situations, OK, if there is a very, very large number of people in the parent population, uh, there may be some complexities in calculating the related probabilities. And obviously, we will be needing computers or calculators to calculate such probabilities. Now, let's calculate the expected value of the hypergeometric random variable. And if we have this following parameter assignment where the population cap uh, size is n and the number of spatial objects in the population is k, and the sample size is lowercase n, then the expected value of our hypergeometric random variable is going to be proportional to k over n here, okay? So if k objects in capital N members are spatial, when we draw a lowercase n of them, then the number of spatial objects that we are going to observe in our sample would be proportional to the fraction of spatial objects in the parent population. So the expected value will simply be n times capital K over capital N. Now, as you can see in the previous question, uh, there will be some hypergeometric probability mass values, which are going to be hard to calculate if this parent population size and the number of spatial objects in the population are large compared to the size of the sample drawn. Okay, so in this case, if the population size is quite large and the spatial objects, number of spatial objects in the population is also large compared to our sample size, if the sample size drawn is small, then we can approximate the hypergeometric random variable with a binomial random variable, and we will simply say that. In the binomial random variable, the success probability is going to be k over n. Okay, so if we are given a hypergeometric random variable with uh, the size, population size, and the number of spatial objects in the parent population being very large compared to the sample drawn, then instead of modeling the problem with the hypergeometric random variable, we can model it with the approximate distribution that is binomial random variable where n is exactly taken, the sample size is exactly taken, and the success probability will be approximated by k capital K over capital N. Okay? Now, if capital N is small, if the parent population size is small, num uh, selecting a spatial object in your first selection and selecting the second spatial object in your latter selections will be different, will have different probabilities, okay? So for example, if you have four spatial members in a parent population of size 10, then when you're in your first row, you will choose a spatial member with 0 0.4 probability. And in your second selection, depending on your first choice, the probability will change, okay? So you see, the probabilities are going to differ. So there is a dependence between the events in each selection. However, if the population size is very large, like for example, 10,000, and there are 4,000 spatial members in it, then the probability of selecting a spatial num person in the first selection is going to be 0 0.4. However, whether you select a spatial person or not in the first selection, in your second selection, the probability will not be affected at all. So it is either going to be, again, uh, 4,000 over 9,999, or it is going to be 3,999 over 9,999. So you see, if the population size is quite large, and the number of spatial objects in the population is also quite large, so every time you select a person or an object, it is going to be spatial with approximately this probability. 
So how, why should we solve this problem with a hypergeometric random variable while we can approximate it perfectly with a binomial random variable? So let's do that. Let's practice this in this question. It says, consider the hypergeometric random variable where the parent population size is 1,000 with 400 spatial objects in it, and we draw a sample of size 10. And we are interested in calculating the probability of x being equal to 6. So in this sample of 10, what is the probability of observing six spatial objects? And we are going to calculate expected value of x. Then we are going to apply a binomial approximation, and we are going to calculate the approximate probability under binomial approximation of x being equal to 6, and expected value of x again under approximation. So let's do this. So if we have this hypergeometric variable with this parameter setting, the exact probability of the number of spatial objects selected in a sample of 10 to be equal to 6 is going to be calculated by its probability mass function. And in the denominator, we have the number of outcomes in our sample space, that is 1,000 choose 10. And we need to choose exactly six from the spatial members of the parent population and four from the non-spatial members of the parent population. Obviously, these number of combinations are hard to calculate by hand. It will take some time to calculate them. Therefore, we need the help of a computer and this probability will be approximately equal to 0 0.1112. Now, the expected value of the hypergeometric random variable is formulated as n times capital K over capital N. So that is going to be 4. So as you can see, if there are 400 spatial members in a parent population of size 1000, so when you randomly draw 10 of them, obviously the expected number of spatial members that you are going to observe, the average, is going to be 4. Now, for the remaining part of the question, we are going to apply a binomial approximation, and we will say that the number of trials in this binomial distribution, the size parameter is going to be 10. So we are repeatedly going to select 10 members from this population. And every time that we select a member, it is going to have the chance of being spatial of 0 0.4. Actually, this is not exactly true. However, the probabilities of selecting these members at every trial are going to be approximately close to 0 0.4, okay? So depending on your first choice and the second choice, the latter choices will have different probabilities. However, it's because the sample size, uh, the parent population size and the number of spatial objects are quite large, they are not going to be affected so much. So we say every time we select a person, it is likely to be a spatial person with 0 0.4 probability. So under this binomial approximation, the probability of a binomial random variable to be equal to 6 with this parameter setting can be computed with the probability mass function of the binomial random variable, that is 10 to 6 times the success probability to the power 6 and the failure probability to the power 4. And this approximate probability is going to be 0 0.1115. So you see, in the fourth digit, there is a little difference. So the approximation works quite good. And the expected value under the binomial approximation is going to be NP, as this is the expected value of a binomial random variable, which is going to be, again, 10 times 0 0.4 and 4. So under the approximation, the expected value is going to be the same.